Genesis chapter 1. And if I've ever been under pressure to do anything, it's now. Because I, I begin to sense how Jesus felt as it approached his departure from the earth. Uh, because whenever you know that your, 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 your journey is time sensitive, then you don't have much time to waste. And you must empty yourself of everything he says to say and go on to the next assignment. That's what this trip is all about. It's all about my being empty of what he says to say to you and then going on to my next assignment and then coming back to you to see if that which you heard is that which you prepared to live by. Purpose in conflict and conflict in purpose. And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea. What verse is that? What verse am I reading? Good. All right, good. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every, what else? over all the earth or cattle and over everything that creeps on the face of the earth or creeping on the earth. God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have rule or dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens and over the cattle, over all the earth over all the creepers creeping on the earth, or creeping thing that creepeth on the face of the earth. And God created the man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. He created them male and female. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over all living things creeping on the earth. So here we're introduced or reintroduced or we're reconnecting with the, with, the, with, the, with the truth that there was a desire announced and that intention is man will be made in my image and likeness. Genesis chapter 26 has a plural pronoun, our, but not chapter 26, verse one, chapter 1, verse 26, has a plural pronoun, let us make man in our image, our likeness. But what do you see in verse 27? So God did what? His. Now although this is going to have to be solved before the end of May, you're going to see that his, by now all of you know English, is not a plural pronoun. When the scriptures were written, there was never a capitalized letter. Capitalization came in when English was formed. And those who translated scripture, wherever they felt deity was referred to, they put a capital letter. So the word God in 26 is the word Elohim, which is plural. But it doesn't refer to only sovereign God. It referred to people of great power. To us in the book of Psalm, he calls us Elohim, and none of us is him. But 27 makes it very clear as to whom or how many people were functioning. What it said, in his image. Are we there? All right. So he blessed, in verse 27, God made man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Or he created man is in, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. All right, so let's work now. 
God bless them at the image stage. Not the likeness stage. Yeah, I'm a marathon runner now, so I gotta take my time and then I get pick up speed and run along the way. Some of you just how you just function. You don't you can't get it if I just throw it in your heart. He said, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. And he created man according to or in his image. And then he blessed them at the image stage. Because the image is a phantom of, a representation of, it is not the real deal. So the image is empowered or blessed. The word bless is the word barak. And is the exact word for curse. So the image is blessed. And he said, rule over the heavens. Rule over the birds, sorry. Rule over the cattle. Rule in the earth. Say power. Let me show you the setup now. So the image is given power. Rule everything. That's power. Nothing is more powerful than you in the earth. All right, then. So now, chapter 2 is showing us again the history. And in chapter 2, verse 7, and God formed man. He planted his garden and he formed man. He formed man before planting it. He formed the man, verse 7, out of the dust of the ground. Genesis 2, 7. Oh, good. Read it for me. Now read it and hear you through this microphone. And the Lord did what? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. So, what did he form out of the dust of the ground? Fade it back a little bit for me, son. The house. Fade it back a little bit, my friend. Who? And he breathed into. And what happened to man? All right. So there was a man that was not a living being. So there was a body formed, but that was not a living being. Until he breathed Ruach into man, man became a living soul. But without Ruach, he's still man. He's just not living. So he had a body for Adam, but Adam was not living. That's the first Adam. First Corinthians chapter 15 told me about the second Adam though. The second Adam, he sends Gabriel to a woman and said, You shall conceive. And you'll, bear, you'll have a child. Call his name Jesus, for he'll save his people from their sins. Was there a body prepared for him? The first Adam is of the earth natural. So the first thing he has is a body with no life. The second Adam is spirit. So he has life without a body. All right. So if, or if the way we formed is different, how could our behavior be the same? Some of you can get this when I go back one more time then. The first man, Adam, is, has a form, but no life is in him. And you could never live unless I put life in you. The second Adam is a word spoken, but there's no form yet. All Mary said is, be it unto me, according to what you say. Gabriel gone, and she start walking, going to see her cousin and stuff like that. And, and after all these things happen, she, her belly begins to grow. How you begin to grow if there's no form? Because the second Adam is spirit first. Then. So the two Adams now are, are different in terms of their entry into earth. So the first one is told after he has life in him, you got power over all this. Rule it. 
Then he puts him in a garden and says, All the trees you could eat except this one. Now I thought I had power over everything. If I have power over everything, why then are you limiting my functionality? Say image. Because your image in the mirror never has the same power that you have as the object. Okay, then let me help you. If I stand in front of the mirror and I do this, what happens to my image? Why can't I tell my image, put your hands down? The object controls the image. Man was made in the image, not object of God. So God has to establish the principle. For you to know who you are in reference to me, I must limit your functionality. You would look like me, but you could never have the power to tell me what I could do. I tell you what you could eat. But I thought you said I have power over all the world. If I have power over everything, who are you to instruct me in reference to what I could and cannot do? Image is given instruction. Object is never given instruction. So object wants to teach image a principle. It's called submission. And the only way the, the, you could learn submission is if there's an instruction given that you would not naturally obey. Conflict. You could never submit to me as an apostle if everything I tell you is what you want to do. No, that's agreement. That's not submission. Submission is when you know in all your heart that what this man is telling me, I would never do that. But, because I'm ready to submit, I will honestly do what I don't want to do. If you're not at that stage, you're not submissive. Again, you are just in agreement. So the man is told an instruction to teach us a principle. How do I learn obedience in the absence of an instruction? Nobody could rule me. Then you're the most rebellious person in the world. Because you can only learn obedience when instructions are present before you. And whenever instructions are presented, then your power is depleted. Because someone is telling you that I have the authority to instruct you to do something. And that is what challenges most people that I know in the church. So what does the church thirst after, Regina? The church wants revelation, not submission. Because revelation means I have light. Instruction means I have responsibility. So somebody could come and preach some deep word and we all get excited because we got revelation. But a person says to you, please, not even please, you need to come and open the door at 5 o'clock. Who? I got things to do. Oh. But you're deep in revelation. But you hate instruction. Because instruction teaches submission. <laughs> so image is made. Image is given power. And image is told you could eat from anything. From the time I hear that, I feel even further empowered. And then you throw a curveball, except this one. Now here I am, knowing I have all power to rule everything, but I cannot rule over what you said. <laughs> I ain't gonna be long before tonight. I can't. Tonight is, believe me, I can't do this to you. Some of you need. When I get through tonight, take some days off and just relax yourself. You are told that you could eat anything. That makes me feel powerful. And then you bring just one item and said, but this one you can't. So the burden is not on the anything. It's on the you can't. 
And then you told me that I am in your image. Watch this carefully now. I am in your image, but if I eat it, I will die. But the object doesn't die. You are now introducing me to a language I have never experienced. You, you thought Adam's life was easy? <laughs> then you put me to sleep. Okay? You took out of me a rib. Form somebody. Bring this person to me. You know that I have the ability to name because you named before me. And I began to call this person bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and all that. Right, 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 good. Right. And now both of us have the same restriction. And the creature that I'm supposed to rule over is asking me a very simple question. Did God really say, woman, that you mustn't eat this? Here's my problem now. My problem is that Desire is conflicting with my instruction. And the Bible said that when the woman saw the tree, that it was good. Hold on. Genesis chapter 3, find verse 6 of me. 3, 6, somewhere around there. I know verses are good. Hold on. Pastor Jerry, prophet, she heard a voice, but then she saw the tree. Close your eyes. I ain't stealing your money. Just close your eyes for me. She heard a voice. Then she saw the tree. Good. Close your eyes. Don't read. I don't want you to read now. Close your eyes. Okay. See for me, with your eyes closed, a white limousine with red lights, three lights at each door. Can you see it? The wheel is, is, is black nice and shiny. In this limousine has some 12-inch TV monitors, and they're showing the weather, and it's snowing. Can you see it? Keep your eyes closed. Why could you see it? What is it that you're hearing? My voice is painting a picture that you could see without your eyes. Open your eyes. Read. The tree was there all the time. How you now see the tree is good? What made you see? He never pointed to the tree. He asked her a question based on the tree. And the desire she had painted a picture of the tree. That coincided with what she wanted to do. This is going somewhere for you tonight. Because conflict is found in the voices. That paint the picture that always contradicts the instruction. You know why some of us fight so much? Hello. Hi, how was your day? Going good. Girl, you hear see your apostle came back? He came back serious, you know. I didn't really think God had to send him back to talk like, like, like that. Why he got to be so firm? You mean the time he couldn't come and say something else? He couldn't even tell us about some miracle? What are you hearing? And the voice that you are hearing is now causing a competition with the instructions that are given. Yes. Why are you still going to this church? You don't see this church is going down? Don't you see things are not going the way they're supposed to be? You are hearing a voice. And the voice will paint a picture that does not even exist before your eyes. But the voice has formed an image that I like to work with. So the conflict for the woman is, I have an instruction because she said, God said, if I touch a tree, even at it. If I touch this tree, I'm going to die. Yet you go touch it and eat it. 
because all the voice did was it changed her perception of the object called the tree. Hear me carefully now. Hear me carefully here now. All the voice did was it changed her perception of the object called the tree. It didn't change her desire. She didn't eat because of the object. She ate because of the desire. So it's a good place right now in this, 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 this minor discussion for you to ask yourself, what do I really want? Because the test is not about what you see. The test is what do you really want. Because if you see what you don't want, you have no desire for it. But if what you are seeing is what you desire, and the voice is telling you, go after that which you see. Now what do you do? Can you say no to yourself? She took. She ate. And she satisfied. She gave to him. And he did the same thing. Okay. Now we have accountability. Adam, where are you? <laughs> Ooh. Well, before accountability, let me get to the next part that we don't like either. But from the time he ate, their eyes were opened. We're naked. Okay, now there's discovery. And the discovery comes based on the memory of the instruction. Well, let me take talking slow because some of us need to hear slowly now. Oh God, I just did what I should not have done because I'm seeing what I never saw before. Lord, I did what I should not have done because I'm seeing what I never saw before. Many times in the midst of a conflict, what you notice is what was not even there before. <laughs> no, I ain't calling me in vain. He's going to help you tonight, baby. But because I have challenged an instruction, my eyes are open to that which it never saw before. Now here is the likeness phase coming in now. Ooh! Now God bless my image. He bless the image because the image has no issue. Now come to the likeness part. What is the only thing that will make me like you? Is if I know both good and evil. All right then, but what made me know evil? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't get nervous now. What made me know evil? Good. As long as I did not touch what you told me not to touch, I will be an image. But the minute I, I did that, I was introduced to evil. Now I know two things. I know responsibility therefore because now I'm aware of good and I'm aware of evil. And now God, you're coming to ask me a question in my likeness phase. Ooh. All right. If you're going to question me when I'm now like you. <laughs> Look how you set me up. In the image phase, you didn't tell me. Listen. He's coming to try to get you to eat this thing. No? You shouldn't do that. That's the image phase. But you just blessed me though. And you just said I have power over everything though. So if I have power over everything, then one conversation with a harmless beast can't do anything to me. But the conversation with the beast is leading to my likeness phase. Oh Lord. And when I do this, I discover I'm naked. Then you come to talk. Adam, where are you? I heard the voice or the sound of your voice walking. It's building like an echo. And I hid myself because I was naked. Why you, how you know? How do you know that you're naked? 
The minute I'm asked that question, it means now I am in my likeness phase because I can give an account as to what I have done. This woman here that you give me, she made me eat. Oh. <laughs> so now you understand account. Adam didn't lie. Work with me now. He said, did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat? Listen to what he said. This woman, the woman that you give me, she, get, she made me eat it. That's called accountability. He's reporting what has happened. Which again puts him below the object. Because the object is asking the question to the image. What did you do? How is it in 2015 we could go to God and tell God, you better do, you better deal with this man because I, I can't deal with it anymore. Image does not have power to question the object. All he did when he heard, what did you do? She made me do that. So with every answer, Adam's power is being... He's seeing where he is in reference to sovereignty. Every time you are asked a question and you answer, it shows where you are in reference to the person questioning you. Because if you don't honor them, you will never answer. <laughs> some of you got some friends that you explain too many things to. And you don't understand what I've just said to you. Every time someone asks you a question and you answer, you are showing where you are in reference to the one asking the question. Wives, that's why your husband gets vexed and want fuss in the house. Where you been? From the time I answer that, I'm already telling you that tonight you're the boss. <laughs> I've entered the corner with the boys. Why you take so long? Because they wanted to see uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao fight. You start finding explanations all the time. And every time you answer the question, the wife knows in her mind, I got you here now, doc, because you're answering me now. I'm in charge. And most of the times, let me help you ladies in here, when the man is answering so willingly, that's not what he did. <laughs> Sorry, I came to help my daughters out too. <laughs> If ever he's so willing to furnish and he's not because the man is functional by authority. So the first thing is, why, why are you asking me all these questions? Who do you think I was? That's when you know he's pure. But when he say, I've been around the corner with the boy. Why you took so long? Because um, they just want us to drink a few um, uh, 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 vitamins. Really? All right. Who drove home? <laughs> Who was the driver? Because <laughs> now you're in conflict now. Conflict is if I tell one more lie, God might kill me. So you're pausing, then you start building courage. Listen here, listen, woman. Listen, listen, man. You got to ask me all these questions? Yes, because you answered two. Let's get to number three. You always know authority based on your willingness to answer. When you see you go to court and you know this guy on the bench could give me five years, you don't get all the attitude that you had with a person who can't touch you. Why are you so willing to answer? Because we understand that the authority has the power to ask anything of me and I will answer based on my perception of the authority. So if you don't respect authority, they can ask you anything. You answer them any old way. I have seen some of the most rude people stand in court. Yes, your worship. No, your worship. Yeah. Now, okay. Assaulting a police officer? <laughs> Using obscene language in the, in, the, in the lockup? In the precinct? You cussing in the police station? No, your worship. <laughs> Hold on, man! Act how you acted in the precinct! But because we know this person is vested with authority to do something that's detrimental to me, I will submit. That's not called submission, that's fear. 
So, so when the question started being asked of, this, of my good friend Adam, he knew that my answer now is not about the tree. It's about the death that I was told about. So if I blame her, I ain't dying. <laughs> she made me do it. So if anybody should die, it should be her. And then she knows the consequence because she said, if I touch it, I'll die. The serpent made me do that. Now here's my boy, <laughs> Mr. Serpent, standing upright. Because he wasn't crawling on his belly before. No, I can't pass this anywhere else. <laughs> so the first person to be cursed. Oh. Now, 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 hear me, church. There is a conflict, therefore, even in reference to their willingness to be responsible for what has happened. You made me do it. You made me do it. I couldn't find anybody else to blame to do it. Then here's a statement that presents Yeshua to us. There will be enmity between you and the woman. Between your seed and her seed. What does the word enmity mean? Somebody tell me, what does enmity mean? Good. Conflict. Jesus or the Christ or the Lord presents himself or his future to us by conflict. After sin, he announces there'll be enmity between you and the woman, between her seed and your seed. Your presentation of yourself apart from creation is conflict. Can I take you where I set you up to be up now? How many of us are filled with the Spirit of the Lord? Don't lie. You filled with the Spirit of the Lord? Okay. All right, I didn't see. So just in case you lifted your hand when I wasn't watching. Do it one more time. How many of you in here are filled with the Spirit of the Lord? Okay. And how was the Lord presented to us in the first place? How did he present himself? War, enmity, conflict. Okay. So the moment you ask God to fill you with his spirit, you are being filled in readiness for conflict. But the church said, if you get saved, all these things, would, there won't be a problem no more. You'll be all right. Come to church, baby. When you come to church, God can fix all that. Yeah, he'll fix it to get you ready to be filled for conflict. Because the true sign of Holy Spirit being in a person is war surrounding them. Can I take you to the scripture? He told 12 disciples, listen to me. Because you follow me, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring what? Conflict. I will put mother against daughter-in-law, father against son, son against father. Conflict. From the time I empower you, you are empowered for conflict. And you crying for peace. But what he said, he said the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking, it is in righteousness, peace and joy but God if you say it's peace how is it that I have conflict all around me that's where peace is look here peace is having rest in the midst of conflict if you have no conflict you have no peace Because, okay, let me help you further now. The kingdom of God is not by observation. It's not over there. It's not over there. Where is it? It's in you. So for the, the, the kingdom of God is not in eating, drinking. It's in righteousness, peace. Where is the peace found? In here. But where is the conflict? Around here. What happens to us is we want the peace around here. Because of the conflicts we face in here. So 
we try our best for God to surround us with peace because of inner conflict. No, he must surround you with conflict because of inner peace. That's when you're full of Holy Ghost. Because the kingdom of God never conflicts with what is inside of you. So when the Prince of Peace steps inside of you, you have peace inside. That's why it passes all understanding. Because when war is all around you, you could smile. And you telling the person who cussing you that's the best you could do? You mean you can't find enough someone else to say? Now last year when they cussed you, you been crying. But this year, you smiling and saying you mean to tell me that's the best you could come up with? Come on man, you got more sense than that. What has given you so much peace? The kingdom is on the inside and the kingdom is in righteousness. So what do we want now? Again, we want God to surround us with righteousness. What does that mean? Make me look right in church while I'm unrighteous in here because your thoughts aren't pure. So we just train. We're trying our best to look right because all we want to do is to be surrounded with an image to protect the false object. You see the trouble we're in? It's in righteousness. Peace. But where is the peace found? Why you want to have your whole house in peace? If your whole house is not in kingdom. I don't think you understood what I just said. Okay, so let me help you then. If you got four other people who don't have God in them, how could your house be in peace? Okay, God, so as long as you come into me, there is war. But I am praying for there to be peace around me so that I could be at peace with the people before me. The only way that happens is when you suppress the growth of the seed, which is kingdom, and you act just like them. You just fit right in. So now here's the other word in the conflict avoidance. It's called compromise. Right. So I just act like you on Monday, Tuesday's church. So we can, okay. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you go here, I go here, and then we come back in compromise. Because if I ever act out the kingdom inside of me, there is conflict. Calling a truce, hear me carefully. Calling a truce does not mean there is an end to how I feel. It means there is an end to what is happening. If there's, okay, alright, alright, alright. So there's, there's, there's the Williams gang and there's the honorary gang. And you guys are shooting each other every so often, beat with stick, kick down the stairs all day. You fight it. And then I come back to Jersey and say, now listen here, son. This is, this is, not, this is not right. And two, you say, all right, let's call a truce. Chaykan, come here, Chaykan, let me show the children to Come. No baby sleeping. Come, Williams and, 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 and Honorary. Chaykan, call a truce. Right. <laughs> in his mind, and in his mind, they have stopped fighting physically but they still have the same feeling because thanksgiving you ain't coming back to my house and you're not coming back to my house so there was a truce but there's no change in terms of my emotional feeling towards you and what many times we call peace is just a truce to avoid further conflict And the two of them, because they don't want to lose more members of the family, shook hands. But they have not shaken the issue off. So the boys begin to grow up remembering that there was a gunshot fired and killed my brother. Now two of you said, because you're dead now. <laughs> he ain't dead. 
His memory isn't dead either. Why would he get up and teach his sons, Joshua, to hate your children? Yeah, that's good. That's good. If there was resolution, there would not be a continuation of the hate. That's right there. That's right there. So what we have in church sometimes, even in church, is a truce. I'm not going to talk about you like this to hurt you. Because after all, I don't feel good when I come to church talking this way about you. So it's just because of the coming to church feeling. Uh, right. But the conflict isn't resolved. Because we have not discovered the purpose for the conflict. That's right. they had. Right. You can't find the people. You could find the purpose. Listen now. Listen. Let me. You make me jump ahead, but I'll teach you Sunday's message now. I'll teach you a piece of it. You, you make me jump ahead. Abraham has two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Hagar and Sarah are the mothers. Hagar is Ishmael's mother. Sarah is Isaac's mother. Okay. Now there's a conflict in the house. The conflict is Ishmael is mocking and, 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 and scuffing at, at the son. Sarah said, get rid of this girl. Abraham don't feel good about it. Because it's his son. God comes on the scene and said, put both of them out. And Abraham has to painfully watch his son leave with his mother. He lives and he dies with his son being gone. In Galatians chapter 4, the Lord inspires the apostle Paul to write, that the bondwoman and the freed woman had two sons. And the bondwoman is Mount Sinai, which is the law. So Hagar is the law. We are not saved by the bondwoman. We are saved by the free woman. So there was a purpose for the conflict in Abram's house. The purpose was for our salvation. He died never knowing the reason. And to this day, the Muslims hate the Christian and they don't know why. Because to them there was an injustice done to Isaac. But to God there was purpose in the conflict. Oh, that's good. Yes, sir. So that's why you have to learn to pray when you start in conflict. God please teach me what the purpose is. Because if you don't know the purpose you'll keep Isaac Ishmael and you'll keep Hagar and you'll keep bondage. Now oh, you got to pay me for that. Can you make me talk ahead of Sunday? But do you understand that? Okay. So God said, I'll put enmity between you and the woman. Between her seed and your seed. Conflict. But there's a purpose for the conflict. The purpose of the conflict is to get us back to him. Okay. I said it too fast. Because of course it's just a story for some people. So let me slow down and give it to you. The conflict that existed thousands of years ago existed for you and for me so before your arrival there was a conflict to have your safety and your salvation before you got here God initiated a conflict to get you into the realm of peace which is eternal so you could be saved so there's sometimes when conflict comes ahead of a generation to rescue it what did he just say what this man just told me? What this man just said to me tonight, boy? All right. If he leaves or he would have left that man in your life, your son would be an alcoholic. This one would have been a womanizer. That one would have been kicking people down the stairs. So I put a conflict here ahead of that generation so he could leave and have them rescued. There's purpose for every single conflict including those that hurt you the most. And can I help you? And then close. Usually the most painful conflicts are the ones with the most purpose in them. <laughs> just, get, just ask God for a flashback to the ones that really made you cry. You start shedding weight like you on, 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 on Slim Fast or something. The one that had you walk in the house like you about to go crazy. The ones that had you weeping for two months. You cry and say, God, I feel like, like killing myself. If you, you're looking at the rope, you're looking and saying, I would hang myself tonight. And God said, that's the one that has a purpose attached to it. 
because the one that hurts the most has the greatest purpose and that's the one that you prayed about the most to end because the purpose uh -huh, is divinely orchestrated and yet the prayer of the image never changes the intention of the object Some of you couldn't handle the pain you face because it had no meaning. And I could hear some of you, Father, forgive me. And I know I had to sin for this. There's no way that this could come just like that. Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. And then you go and find a person and say, I am sorry for what I did to you. Thinking that the apology would resolve the conflict. <laughs> But the apology has nothing to do with the purpose. The purpose is I have to get you in conflict to show you the future that this is the plan. Man, listen here. You, you think the serpent couldn't say sorry? He at least he asked about a tree. Why he couldn't say sorry? I mean, I didn't see he could have gone so far. <laughs> You people just pull things out of me as one go home and I can't stop. Listen to me. Brother Eddie. Brother Joseph, two you knew. See, you wouldn't lie to me. You tell me the truth. The serpent asked the woman a question, didn't he? And then he said, You wouldn't surely die. Hold on. How is it that when the woman said, He deceived me and made me do it, he couldn't talk? He had the ability to speak at any time. When God is telling what would happen to him, he could have responded. So it means then that some people were empowered to talk to you for a season to activate the conflict. And as long as the Lord shows up, they no longer have a voice because their purpose has been served. <laughs> Stand up, let's go home. That's I'm done right there. That's all I want to tell you. Come, let's go, I finish. You don't need more than that. You can't ask some more than what I just said. That just freed you 100%. They just came in your life with a voice for one cause. To make you do it. And once the conflict is activated, they have no value after that. Oh, you think I'm kidding with you? I'm done. Come, come. Go home and think on these things. You could try calling them back all you want, they'll never answer. You could text them all you want, they'll never respond. You could sit and they would talk to you for two hours tonight and you'd never understand a word they said to you. But last week you understood them clearly though. Because their purpose is over. And once their purpose is over, you no longer understand their language. The woman and the snake never talk after that. <laughs> Good. Because we have no more conversations to have. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. May he keep you till Sunday. <laughs> May the Lord keep you till Sunday. Oh, yeah. This, this is the introductory phase. <laughs> this is the introduction we have now.